Remember affluenza teen Ethan Couch? Did you know that the car crash that put him in the headlines was far from the only legal run-in his family has had? Keep watching for his parents' full history of trouble with the law. In 2013, 16-year-old Ethan Couch was driving under the influence in the Fort Worth, Texas suburbs when he caused a crash that killed four pedestrians and injured nine other people. According to the Cleburne Times Review, the teen faced serious criminal charges, including four counts of intoxication manslaughter. Ethan's legal team came up with a novel and shocking defense. They claimed that the teen was so coddled by his wealthy parents that he was effectively raised without boundaries or a sense of personal responsibility. The lawyers called it affluenza, a blending of the words affluence and influenza. Shockingly, the judge bought it. Ethan was sentenced to probation instead of jail time. His attorney was arguing that he was the product of an affluent but totally dysfunctional home. Years before the fatal wreck that made him infamous, it was already apparent that Ethan's parents were not particularly interested in consequences. For example, as CNN reported, when he was 13, Ethan was caught driving himself to his private school. When questioned about this by the school principal, Ethan's father, Fred Couch, purportedly threatened to buy the school. Ethan's first real brush with the law would come a couple of years later when, according to WDAF, he was found passed out in a pickup truck with an undressed 14-year-old girl inside. He was sentenced to probation, alcohol awareness classes, and 12 hours of community service. Meanwhile, Ethan's home life apparently was quite toxic. The Chicago Tribune reported that Tanya, Ethan's mother, alleged that Fred was physically and emotionally abusive toward her, and the couple split in 2006. Fred Couch made a fortune in business. The Chicago Tribune reports that in 1986, he founded Cleburne Metalworks, which installs metal roofing. As of 2015, it employed 40 people and made an estimated $9.59 million million dollars in annual sales. According to a 2013 Daily Mail report, Fred racked up a list of 22 criminal offenses, 18 vehicle infractions, and four misdemeanors. His rap sheet includes driving 95 miles per hour in a 60 miles per hour zone, writing a bad check, evading arrest, and assault against his wife. Though he paid fines here and there, he never served a day in jail. An employee at the Johnson County Court Records Office quipped that Fred must have a very good attorney. In 2014, KDFW reported that police responded to a disturbance. They found Fred Couch at the scene, where he told officers he was a reserve officer and had police stuff in his car. He also flashed a badge. Fred was never a police officer in any jurisdiction, and he was charged with impersonating a police officer. As recently as 2019, Fred Couch was still getting into trouble with the law. According to KXAS, he was accused of choking his girlfriend. A grand jury declined to levy charges. In 2003, according to the New York Daily News, Tanya Couch pleaded guilty to reckless driving after running another motorist off the road. And in early 2015, she was charged with leaving the scene of an accident after causing a minor wreck. Prosecutors dismissed the charges. In November 2015, when Ethan was serving his probation for the fatal car crash, video emerged showing him drinking at a party. Authorities wanted to talk to him about the video, as that would have been a violation of his parole. He missed a parole appointment, and he became a wanted man. And for Ethan and his mother, you can run, but you're always going to be looking over your shoulder. We're not going to give up. Talking Points Memo reported that Ethan, with the help of his mother, had fled to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, though they were later caught and extradited to the U.S. Ethan was, for the first time in his life, put inside a jail cell, while Tanya was charged with money laundering. As recently as April 2022, according to the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, Tanya is still trying to fight the money laundering charges for helping Ethan escape to Mexico. A 2016 Dallas Observer report suggested she was broke, although the true status of her bank account was unclear. As for Ethan, in January, January 2022, Radar Online reported that a documentary about him was in the works. Ethan actually appears to have kept mostly his nose clean since his 2018 release from jail. That said, January 2022, according to the Dallas Morning News, he was jailed again for violating parole after he tested positive for THC. But he was later released after the accuracy of the test was called into question. If you or someone you know is dealing with domestic abuse, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at one 800 799 you can also find more information, resources, and support at their website.